Hello folks, Jason Crispin here, JC's Bees, your Central Ohio beekeeper. And today we're going to talk gas vaps and the benefits to having a gas vaporizer versus having something like a ProVap, whether it's a homemade unit or one you purchased. There's actually even benefits between the gas vaporizer and the battery operated uh, vaporizing wand. So in this video, I'm going to tell you what those benefits are. So make sure you stay tuned. Okay, the very first thing I want to point out is you can see Ladybug down there hiding underneath my glass table, staring directly at us. Oh, Ladybug. Yep, look up through the hole, honey. Down a little bit further with your eye. There you go. Okay, folks, today I want to discuss gas vaps. And you might be asking yourself, first of all, what is a vap? A vap is a vaporizer and vaporizers are getting to where they're very common to use in treatment of varroa mites. And to do that you need something called oxalic acid. Um, the way it's done is you place this oxalic acid powder into your vaporizer. The vaporizer's heat turns it into a gas and it's released out through the tubing and into the colony where it kills varroa mites at a very high rate. So let's get on into this. Um, first of all, let's talk about the advantages. You can see I've got my homemade ProVap here. And when this first came out a couple years ago, this unit was running, uh, I believe close to 500 bucks, maybe it was 400, but either way, very pricey unit. So I made my own and I did that for about 100 bucks. Um, if this is something you're interested in, there'll be a video up in the right hand corner that you can follow over and see how I made my unit. Now, the disadvantage between this and the gas vap um, is right here. You need electricity to run this. And it's the same with uh, the vaporizing wand. You have to have a car battery to hook it to, and then you've got to lug the car battery from unit to unit. With the gas vap, like you see here, this is the whole unit. There is no cord. Um, your source of energy is butane and flame, and that's going to heat your oxalic acid powder up and turn it into a gas. Now before we get to this one, um, let's back up a little bit and look at these two units. Let me explain. A couple months back, um, I started to see everybody purchasing these gas vaps, and they were sharing pictures of them. I got to looking at these pictures and thinking, boy, I could make that a lot cheaper than than what they're asking. Um, not that I mind supporting what they're making, it's just the fact that I just like to fiddle around with different things and figure it out on my own. Well, let me go ahead and tell you, looking back, it would have been much cheaper to buy the gas vap than to try and make it myself. Because I've got, I bet you, $30, $40 and just different fittings trying to figure out how this worked. So, this one here, this is the very first prototype. Um, the way it works, you take your torch and you stick it on here. You would put your auxilic acid powder down in here and you would ignite the torch and heat it up, releasing the gas out through this tube. Well, that was the idea behind it, anyhow. The way it actually worked was not very well, and the problem was I didn't have the hole here at the time, but um, once you put the torch on, it has no problem lighting. The problem is, is it don't want to stay lit once you put this cap on. Why is that? Because it can't get oxygen. So what I decided to do was I drilled a quarter inch hole right here to allow it to get some air so that the torch could breathe and, and burn. And that helped somewhat. I would say it lights 50% or stays lit 50% of the time now, which wasn't really good enough for me. Um, I kept trying to perfect this model and it didn't really master anything except for wasting time. <laughs> so I ended up um, taking this same design and furthering it a little bit more, hoping that I could figure out why it or how to get air to the torch, and I made a guard for it. 
that's what these holes are here on each side. This guard would slide over your tubing, as you see here, and there's a screw hole, and there's a screw hole. The problem is, like I said, once you put this lid on, it's pretty much a sealed unit and it doesn't want to breathe. If you look down inside of here, you can see a white crystally powder. And what that is, is the oxalic acid that I dumped in to test it out. And once the cap went on, the flame went out and it didn't get hot enough to turn the acid powder into a gas. So I knew I needed to scrap this idea and um, I started talking to some people that actually purchased a gas vap and one of them, I believe his name is Chad, I hope that's correct. And if it is, um, thank you very much, Chad. And if it, your name is not Chad, I apologize. And I do appreciate the pictures you sent me. Well, I got to looking at his pictures and the gas vap was not a sealed unit all the way up to the chamber. That was my problem. It needed a place to breathe. So I created this. Now what we got here in the end is a homemade scoop for your acid to scoop it up and put it in your caps. And this is just a brass rod with a small uh, copper cap. Here we've got three quarter inch cap, three quarter inch pipe, quarter inch tubing, three quarter inch 45 degree elbow. Here we have, I believe it's either an inch and a half or a two inch piece of steel pipe, um, about two inches long. On the bottom, you got a piece of stainless steel, and you can see I bent it to go up and around the pipe. And to close off the bottom so that the heat could remain on the inside of this chamber, I simply put a washer in there. And you can see there is a little bit of an air gap, but it helps retain the heat. So, if we look down on the inside of here, you can see this copper pipe. On the bottom of this copper pipe is another one of these caps, and it's been brazed to the bottom. So that makes this all one piece, along with this quarter inch tubing, which has been, uh, there's been a hole drilled in the copper pipe. I pushed it in, you can see there on the inside, and then I brazed it in place. So I've got this unit. Now what's different from this unit to this unit is it's not sealed. If you look down in here, and I hope there's enough lighting, this 45 degree elbow enters this pipe where there's little flanges bent over on each side so that I had a tab to put these screws in and make this all one sturdy piece. Basically the elbow to the pipe. And it doesn't move, folks. Now, in order to get this uh, elbow to go into the pipe and give me the tabs, I took the bottom, and I'm going to show you with this one. You take this 45 degree elbow. I took and grinded a rounded groove here and on the bottom. I'm going to show you a picture. And what that did is it left wings, if you will, on each side of the pipe that I was able to bend over down in here to give me a place for my screw to go in. Hopefully that makes sense to you. So as this elbow enters this pipe and the tabs are bent over, it's actually not even touching this copper pipe in the middle. Once it comes through this steel pipe, the flanges are bent over and there's an air gap. So that allows for oxygen to get all the way down in here and back up in the elbow. Um, it also acts as a, a, a guard, this pipe, to keep the flame on the inside so you're not torching your colony. Now, just to give you a little demonstration, I am going to put the torch on and I am going to put the cap on and I'm going to light it a couple of times just to show you it lights every single time. You can't actually see the flame, but you can hear it burning. I'll get my microphone in here. Lighting every single time. So that's how I made that. And it's worked rather well. Um, at one time I thought maybe I ought to make these and sell them, but I don't know if that's something I want to get into or not. Um, it's still up in the air. But um, at any rate, I'd like to give you a small demonstration and show you how well this vaporizes 
and um, I'd also like to tell you that now is a great time if you get warmer weather um, say you're in the 40s go out and do a vaporizing treatment that's really going to knock the mites back this time of year and it's going to be great for the colonies so let's get this heated up and I will show you how she works Now with the oxoic acid, you want to be very critical with your measurements. And we're going to pretend we're treating a 5 frame nuke, which would be a half of a gram. So you want to let this unit get good and hot before you put the cap on. That way once the cap is on and you tilt the unit right side up, because I'll put the cap on upside down like this, once I tilt it right side up, the acid powder is going to fall to the bottom and it's going to begin to turn into a vapor. So we want to make sure it's good and hot when we do that. I also want to tell you that this unit does get very hot, so you do not want to touch it without gloves. And it's recommended that you probably wear gloves and all the other safety material when you're messing with oxalic acid, and I mean uh, a respirator and some eye protection. Now what's the eye protection for, you're probably wondering? Well, there's been instance, instances where this cap, not necessarily on just the gas vat, but on the ProVap too, has came off during vaporization. And when that happens, poof, acid goes everywhere, and you surely wouldn't want to get that in your face. Okay, so let's give her a try. Got the cap on, we'll tilt it right side back up. Give her a little tap. And here we go. I probably should have let it get a little bit hotter, but it is what it is at this point, folks. You'll be able to see some vapors and see how she works. Now it might be a little bit better effect if I'd hold it out like this for you so you could actually see there is some vapor coming out of there nice vapor right there and there's no cord folks that's the that's the nicest dang thing about this so i'm going to shut that off let that cool back down but you can see how well it vaporized and to shut it off i just turn my torch here to off and let her cool so we'll set her down over here and let her cool Now one thing I didn't mention, um, as this vapor wand tip cools, you're going to see some crystallization around the end. And that's completely normal. Um, that's the acid gas turning back into a powder. That's one of the handy things about this homemade scooping tool. I can take the shaft of the tool, push it back down in there, and it cleans everything out. That way it's not plugged up. If it gets plugged up, that's one of those times that this cap is going to sh uh, shoot off and acid is going to blow everywhere. So you want to make sure to keep this very clean. And there we go. Reamed out, ready to go. I got one more tip for you folks. Um, when I use my oxalic acid vaporizer, whether it's this one or the ProVap, um, I don't necessarily insert them through the entrance of the colony. What I will do is uh, drill a hole at the bottom of the lower brood box, um, just a little bit bigger than this shaft. And I'll use that hole for, uh, to apply this vapor. I'll simply shove this shaft in, do my treatment, and remove it. And once I am done with the treatment, I will take golf tees, as you see here, you can buy them on Amazon real cheap, and I'll link them down in the video description if it's something you're interested in. But I'll take a golf tee, and I'll cut about half of it off, and I'll use the top part as my plug. I'll stick it in the hole. The bees will propolize it in there, pretty much gluing it in place. When I come back the next time to treat for the treatment, um, I'll use the shaft of my scoopy. I'll pull out the golf tee, insert this shaft, clean out any propolis so that it's not plugging up the tip of my wand or my uh, vaporizer. So that's just a little tip that I'd throw out there for you. Um, hopefully you enjoyed this video and if so you'll throw me a big thumbs up that'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks 
and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. If you have not subscribed yet, please take a minute to do so and make sure you click on the little bell so you can be notified when I release new videos. It's hard to believe it's December what, 12th, 13th and it's 53 degrees. I said it was going to rain all day. As you can see, it's not raining. Um, I heard predictions the other day for our winter and they're saying another warmer than normal winter not something I wanted to hear but it's something as a beekeeper and a farmer I need to prepare for um, with the warmer weather the bees are going to eat more food than they should because they should be clustered in torpor when it's nice and cold but instead it's warm and they're eating and then there's the mud to play with when I'm feeding my cattle you seen the tractor there in the video a second ago um, that tractor's got a good bit of weight to it you take a, a wet, wrapped uh, hay bale and put on the front that's about 1,500, 2,000 pounds and try to drive across the pasture every single day, um, you start to make some mud. And let me tell you, I'm about sick of it already. I'd rather see frozen ground and the bees clustered, but it's not what it is. So anyway, folks, hope you enjoyed the video today. Um, hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, folks, and we'll see you next week.